guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have my June book haul for you, so stay tuned. So I accumulated 23 books in the month of June and wow. <laughs> Well, I guess we should just get started. I've got books from subscription boxes. I've got books that I bought from bookstores. I've got books that were just sent to me. I've got giveaways, all kinds of stuff. So the first book that I have here is The Escape Room by Megan Golden. This was sent to me by the publisher. This says, getting in is easy, getting out is murder. Vincent, Jules, Sylvie, and Sam are ruthlessly ambitious high flyers working in the lucrative world of Wall Street finance, where deception and intimidation thrive. Getting rich is all that matters, and they'll do anything to reach the top. When they're ordered to participate in a corporate team-building exercise that requires them to escape from a locked elevator, dark secrets of their team began to be laid bare. The biggest mystery to solve in this lethal game, what happened to Sarah Hall? Once a young shining star, now dead but not forgotten. This is no longer a game. They're fighting for their lives. And I thought it sounded really cool and it looks really creepy. Got somebody peeking out through there. So I was invited to participate in the Amazon Vine program where I get to select certain items and they'll send them to me for free and I get to review them and well review them like write an actual review on their site and of course <laughs> i picked books now for the apparently they don't really send finished copies of these books they'll send arcs if they have them i think out of all of the books that they sent me only one i believe is a finished copy and most of them have come been out for quite some time there's just a couple that are newer. Okay, so the first one I have here is Call It What You Want by Bridget Kimmerer. This is one of the newer ones. It came out June 25th of 2019. And this says, when his dad is caught embezzling funds from half the town, Rob goes from popular lacrosse player to social pariah. Even worse, his father's failed suicide attempt leaves Rob and his mother responsible for his care. Everyone thinks of Megan as a typical overachiever, but she has a secret of her own after the pressure got to her last year. And when her sister comes home from college pregnant, keeping it from her parents might be more than she can handle. When Rob and Megan are paired together for a calculus project, they're both reluctant to let anyone through the walls they've built. But when Megan learns of Rob's plan to fix the damage caused by his father, it could ruin more than their fragile new friendship. This captivating, heartfelt novel asks the question, is it okay to do something wrong for the right reasons? The next one they sent me is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gaucho. And this is a graphic novel and it came out in February of 2019. And this is about a boy named Ari who wants to get out of his family business of the bakery and he wants to go on tour with his band so he has to train somebody to take his place in comes hector who is a cute boy who loves baking and as ari starts training hector i think ari starts falling for hector and maybe he doesn't want to leave after all and i thought it really cute Next up we have Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. This is the second book in the Geekerella series. This one came out in April of 2019. I do believe, yes, April 2nd, 2019. And this is, I don't know if it's continuing the story, but I think it takes, uh, it follows a different character, I believe. Jessica Stone, which is the female character in the movie, that they were making in the first series or in the first book and because this is a sequel I don't want to really tell too much about it but this is cute. Next is the only final copy they sent me and that is The Sound of Drowning by Catherine Fleet and this says Meredith Hall has a secret. Every night she takes the ferry to meet Ben her best friend and first love. 
Though their relationship must remain a secret, they've been given a second chance, and Mare is determined to make it work. She lost Ben once before and discovered the awful reality. She doesn't know how to be happy without him. Until White washes ashore, a brash new guy with a Texas twang and a personality bigger than his home state. He makes her feel reckless, excited, and alive in ways that cut through her perpetual gloom. The deeper they delve into each other's past, the more Wyatt's charms become impossible to ignore. But a storm is brewing in the outer banks. When it hits, Mare finds her heart tearing in half and her carefully constructed reality slipping back into the surf, as she discovers that even the most deeply buried secrets have a way of surfacing. She'll have to learn that nothing is forever, especially second chances. Next up, we have Death Prefers Blondes by Caleb Ro Roerig, and this came out January of 2019. This says, A rebel heiress must solve a family mystery with the help of jewel-thieving drag queens. Yeah. <laughs> Teenage socialite Margot Manning leads a dangerous double life. By day, she dodges the paparazzi while soaking up California sunshine. By night, however, she dodges security cameras and armed guards, pulling off high-state cat burglaries with a team of flamboyant young men. In and out of disguise, she's in all the headlines. But then Margot's personal life takes a sudden, dark turn, and a job to end all jobs lands her crew in deadly peril. Overnight, everything she's ever counted on is put at risk. Backs against the wall, the resourceful thieves must draw on their special skills to survive. But can one rebel heiress and four kickboxing drag queens withstand the slings and arrows of truly outrageous fortune? Or will a mounting sea of troubles end them for good? And this sounds absolutely a freaking amazing. Okay, next up is Mira Tidebreaker by Danielle Page. And this one came out April 2nd of 2019. And this is the origin story for Mira and Aquaman that explores Mira's first steps on land, as well as her first steps as a hero or a villain. And I've already read it and I gave it two stars. That's all I want to say. Okay, next up is Internment by Samira Ahmed. And this was one that, well, it was the first one they actually sent me. And I was thinking that I was going to be getting a finished copy. And so when I saw Internment on the list, I was like, oh, yes, I want that. Because I've already read it, because I had an arc. And I gave it five stars, and I loved it. This is about, well, it's set in the world today as we know it with a president that we all know and loathe. Well, maybe not and everybody loathes them, but anyway. This president has set up these internment camps and has rounded up all of the Muslim Americans and placed them in it. And, well, the adults really, I think, are too scared to do anything because whenever they do act out, they're made to disappear. And, well, a lot are beaten in front of everybody else before they disappear. And, well, the rest of the adults, I think, are just too scared to do anything. And the kids, or the teenagers, have decided that they are going to do something about this. And they start a resistance. And this was an amazing book. It came out in March of 2019. Next up is Always Never Yours by Emily Wibberley and Austin Sigmund Broca. And this says, A light-hearted, profoundly poignant modern romance about a girl finding herself, finding love, and finding her way into the spotlight. And I know this is about a girl who, every time a guy dates her, he ends up finding his one true love after her. And well, she's just like, when am I ever going to find my love? And it sounds super cute. And this actually came out in May of 2018. Next up we have Past Perfect Life by Elizabeth Ulberg. And this comes out on July 9th of 2019. This says, an exciting new direction for acclaimed author Elizabeth Ulberg. Past Perfect Life is a tense and tender read about secrets and lies reality and identity, and the ways we put ourselves back together when everything is broken. 
Small Town Wisconsin High School senior Allison Smith loves her life and the way it is, spending quality time with her widowed father and her tight-knit circle of friends, including best friend Marion and maybe more than friends, Neil. Sure, she's stressed about college applications. Who wouldn't be? In a few short months, everything's going to change. Big time. But when Allie files her applications, they send up a red flag because she's not Allison Smith. And Allie's, make that Amanda's, ordinary life is suddenly blown apart. Was everything before a lie? Who will she be after? And what will she do as now comes crashing down around her? Perfect for fans of Far From The Tree, this is the story of one teen's search for herself amid the confusion of a shattered past and a future far from all she planned. Okay, next up is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and this came out on June 11th of 2019. This is about a girl named Trinity Morrow who is, for one, going blind, and two, she lives with a group of wardens. Wardens are, well, gargoyles come to life. And these gargoyles, they can be in the form of what we know as gargoyles, or they can be in human form. They protect the world from demons and keep it so that humans don't have to worry about the demon presence in the world. Most of the world, including most of the wardens, believe Trinity is human and that she was sent to them to be protected from the demons. However, Trinity is not human. She's something special. And I can't tell you what she is. You just have to read it. But it's really good. And if you're fans of, like, the Mortal Instruments, I think you'll enjoy this. Okay, so those are all the books that Amazon sent me. Next are some books that I actually won. Um, Catterbury Classics was having this little photo competition at BEA and BookCon. And if you took a picture on their little photo wall and submitted it with the tags and everything, they would pick one winner. And out of the 300 something entries, they picked mine, which I thought was so awesome. So I actually got to pick five different books of my choice from their word cloud selection. So that's what I have here next. The first one I picked it's kind of an obvious one, and that is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Isn't this pretty? And, uh, oh, look at those end pages. Love it. There is illustrations throughout. I'm excited for this. I'm so happy to have these editions. I love these word cloud editions. I have a couple others. I have like the Wizard of Oz and Frankenstein like this, but I think it's so cool because it has like quotes and stuff through like imprinted and these are like, you know, pressed into it. And I just think that is so cool. Love it. Okay, the next one I got was Emma by Jane Austen. And oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And there's the end pages. There's no illustrations on this, but dang, are these like letters, like the words are so freaking small. Ugh. But I, okay, I may have an unpopular opinion here, but I'm not the biggest Jane Austen fan. However, this is one that I have wanted to read because I absolutely loved Clueless. And I know that Clueless is a retelling of Emma. So I thought this might be one that I could get into. Next, I have The Beautiful and Damned and Other Stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And, oh, I just think that is gorgeous. I've only actually read one of the stories in here, so I'm looking forward to getting to read the rest of the stories at some point. Here's what these end pages look like. And again, ridiculously tiny writing. Oh my goodness. Next up, we have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This seems to be a classic that a lot of people end up liking, and I really don't know much about it, but I thought I would give it a shot. Again, tiny print. Gotta love that tiny print. <laughs> but it's beautiful. And then, last but not least, of the Canterbury Classics, 
we have a Peter Pan. And that's a pretty like hollow kind of foil there. And those end pages. There are some illustrations in this one. Okay, next up is one that I got in an unplugged book box, and that is Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazmin. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This says, it's 1989 in New York City, and for three teens, the world is changing. Riza is an Iranian boy who has just moved to the city with his mother to live with his stepfather and stepbrother. He's terrified that someone will guess the truth he can barely acknowledge about himself. Reza knows he's gay, but all he knows of gay life are the media's images of men dying of AIDS. Judy is an aspiring fashion designer who worships her uncle Stephen, a gay man with AIDS who devotes his time to activism as a member of ACT UP. Judy has never imagined finding romance until she falls for Reza and they start dating. Art is Judy's best friend, their school's only out and proud teen. He'll never be who his conservative parents want him to be, so he rebels by documenting the AIDS crisis through his photographs. As Riza and Art grow closer, Riza struggles to find a way out of his deception that won't break Judy's heart and destroy the most meaningful friendship he's ever known. This is a big-hearted, sprawling epic about friendship and love and the revolutionary act of living life to the fullest in the face of impossible odds. And it's just such a bright, colorful book. Okay, next up is a book that I picked up at The Strand in New York City, and that is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. And this is the second book in the Nevermore series. And, well, I can't really tell you much about this one because it's the second in the series. I pulled up on Goodreads about Nevermore so I could tell you about that. A cursed girl escapes death and finds herself in a magical world, but is then tested beyond her wildest imagination. Morgan Crow is cursed. Having been born on Eventide, the unluckiest day for any child to be born, she's blamed for all local misfortunes, from hailstorms to heart attacks and, worst of all, the curse means that Morgan is doomed to die at midnight on her 11th birthday. But as Morgan awaits her fate, a strange and remarkable man named Jupiter North appears. Chased by black smoke hounds and shadowy hunters on horseback, he whisks her away into the safety of a secret magical city called Nevermore. It is then that Morgan discovers Jupiter has chosen her to contend for a place in the city's most prestigious organization, the Wondrous Society. In order to join, she must compete in four difficult and dangerous trials against hundreds of other children, each boasting an extraordinary talent that sets them apart. An extraordinary talent that Morgan insists she does not have. To stay in the safety of Nevermore for good, Morgan will need to find a way to pass the test, or she'll have to leave the city to confront her deadly fate. I thought it sounded really, really cool, and I've been hurt. I've and I've heard it being referred to like Harry Potter-esque. So very good. Okay, next up are some books that I ordered from Thrift Books. The first one is Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. This one says, Wise Blood, Flannery O'Connor's astonishing and haunting first novel is a classic of 20th century literature. It is a story of Hazel Motts a 22-year-old caught in an unending struggle against his innate, desperate faith. He falls under the spell of a blind street preacher named Aza Hawks and his degenerate 15-year-old daughter, Lily Sabbath. In an ironic, malicious gesture of his own non-faith and to prove himself a greater cynic than Hawks, Hazel Motts founds the Church of Christ without Christ, but is still thwarted in his efforts to lose God. He meets Enoch Emery, a young man with wise blood who leads him to a mummified holy child and whose crazy maneuvers are a manifestation of Hazel's existential struggles. This tale of redemption, retribution, false prophets, blindness, blindings, and wisdom gives us one of the most consuming characters in modern fiction. Okay, next up is The Year of Living Danishly, Uncovering the Secrets of the World's Happiest Country by Helen Russell. And, well, 
I've been to the Netherlands and it is probably one of my favorite places in the entire world. And that's why I got this book. This says, as an editor on a glossy magazine in London, Helen Russell appears to be living the dream. Yet between the long hours, the endless commutes, and the stresses of trying for a baby, life is gradually wearing her down. Then her husband is offered a job in Denmark's rural Jutland, and she discovers a startling statistic. The land of long dark winters, pickled herring, and pastries is officially the happiest place on earth. So what do they know that we don't? Are happy Danes just born that way? Or can the rest of us get in on the act? Helen decides there's only one way to find out. She will give herself a year there, trying to uncover the formula for Danish happiness. From education, food, and interior design, to a sad child care and an unfortunate predilection for burning witches, the year of living Danishly is a funny, poignant record of a journey that shows us where the Danes get it right, where they get it wrong, and how we might all benefit from living a little more Danishly ourselves. Next up is Wild Card by Marie Lu, and this is the sequel to Warcross. And Warcross is about this girl named Amika Chen who hacks into the Warcross game. And, well, instead of being arrested, like she probably should have been, she is flown to Japan and recruited to work for the creator of Warcross. And he wants her to participate in the game, but he also wants her to spy for him and try to find out who is doing something bad to the game. And I really, really enjoyed Warcross, so I'm happy to have Wildcard now. Next up is Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee, and this is the sequel, I believe it's a sequel, to To Kill a Mockingbird. But it's set much later. It says, 26-year-old Jean Louise Finch, Scout, returns home from New York City to visit her aging father, Atticus, set against the backdrop of the civil rights tensions and political turmoil that were transforming the South. Jean Louise's homecoming turns bittersweet when she learns disturbing truths about her close-knit family, the town, and the people dearest to her. Memories from her childhood flood back, and her values and assumptions are thrown into doubt. Featuring many of the iconic characters from To Kill a Mockingbird, Ghost Set a Watchman perfectly captures a young woman and a world in painful yet necessary transition out of the illusions of the past, a journey that can only be guided by one's own conscious. Written in the mid-1950s, Ghost Set a Watchman imparts a fuller, richer understanding and appreciation of Harper Lee. Here is an unforgettable novel of wisdom, humanity, passion, humor, and effortless precision, a profoundly affecting work of art that is both wonderfully evocative of another era and relevant to our own times. It not only confirms the enduring brilliance of To Kill a Mockingbird, but also serves as its essential companion, adding depth, context, and new meaning to an American classic. And I absolutely love To Kill a Mockingbird way more than I thought I was going to. So once I finished that, I had to order this. Be right back. My battery's about to die. Okay, I'm back. Sorry if my angle changed. Okay, last but certainly not least, this is a book that I pre-ordered from Amazon and I can't believe that I haven't already read it. That is Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. This says, What secrets does a shadow market hold? The shadow market is a meeting point for fairies, werewolves, warlocks, and vampires. There the downworlders buy and sell magical objects, make dark bargains, and whisper secrets that they do not want the Nephilim to know. Through two centuries, however, there has been a frequent visitor to the shadow market from the City of Bones, the very heart of the shadow hunter's world. As a silent brother, Brother Zachariah is a sworn keeper of the laws and lore of the Nephilim. But once he was a shadow hunter called Jim Carstairs, and his love, then and always, is the warlock Tessa Gray. And Jim is searching through the shadow markets in many different cities over long years for a relic from his past. Follow Jim and see against the backdrop of the shadow market's dark dealings and festival 
Anna Lightwood's doomed romance, Matthew Fairchild's great sin, and Tessa Gray as she's plunged into a world of war. Valentine Morgenstern buys a soul at the market, and a young Jace Whalen soul finds a safe harbor. In the market is hidden a lost heir and a beloved ghost, and no one can save you once you've traded away your heart. Not even Brother Zachariah. And oh, this is a beast of a book. Gosh, it's like over 600 pages. But I can't wait to actually get to around to reading this. Okay, my stack here is very, very wobbly. But those are all 23 books that I got in June. Have you read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.